Hello everyone and welcome back. So in the previous lecture, we learned what is loose and tight coupling. And as a recap, loose coupling is the way to go. And we are striving to make our classes loosely coupled between each other. It states that we should depend on interfaces or abstractions instead of concrete types. So um, we've covered a lot in the previous two videos and we are finally ready to learn what is dependency injection. So uh, I'd like to reference uh, an example from the dependency injection book by written by Mark Seaman and Stephen Van Dorsen, which references the, uh, the most rated stack overflow uh, threat. So it states that, uh, how can we explain the dependency injection to a five-year-old kid? So try to answer this question yourself and pause the video, video for, for a minute before watching the answer. The most rated Stack Overflow tr thread 13 years ago uh, on how to explain a dependency injection to five-year-old states that whenever you go and get things out of the refrigerator for yourself, you can cause problems. You might leave the door open, you might get something mommy or daddy doesn't want you to have, or you might even be looking for something we don't even have or which has expired. What you should be doing instead is to say to need that I need something to drink with lunch and we'll make sure you have something when you sit down to eat. That's great, great explanation, but uh, what does it actually tell us in code? Let's consider the example from the previous video. Remember that we've moved um, network manager to a property inside a view controller. And if we are creating the concrete instance of Alama Fire network manager inside of our uh, view to load method, it is actually going to the fridge and um, looking for something like, since we are actually creating an instance of Alama Fire Network Manager, this is uh, equivalent to opening a refrigerator and trying to search for something else. Instead, we should just say to need, like a property in our view controller, that we need the network manager to operate correctly. And this is a prime example of property injection right there, stating in it that we need a network manager as a property to fire network request and get the list of users. That's awesome, but uh, there is a tiny little problem. If I go back to the scene delegate, comment out the line 21, the app runs just fine, but there's nothing in the console, as you can see. So the behavior is broken. So, uh, the behavior is broken because uh, the property is not set. And since the property is optional, it doesn't run the code. So how can we fix this problem? The first step would be to make this implicitly unwrapped and let the app crash so that um, it crashes at runtime instead of being shipped with a production bug to end users. This is great because it defines a developer mistake. However, we're not willing to crash our uh, crash the app if the developer forgot to set it. And we're not willing to ship a bug either. So how can we actually fix this problem? We can write a test for it, very simple test. Let's create a, like view controller factory, just a class that would create a, an instance of a view controller uh, via static method. Make view controller, let's say. And the reason for extracting the creation into a view controller factory is because we cannot actually test the scene delegate in this context. So uh, let's write a very simple test for this class. So we can name the test as like make view controller sets network manager. So let's define our system under test. Don't worry if, if everything uh, of the tests sounds very unfamiliar to you. This is just to prove that we can actually prove that uh, the property is being set. View controller factory, make view controller, and then we assert that the network manager is not null. Oh yeah, and then I forgot to set it right there. If we go back and run the test, it passes because we're actually setting it. And if we go and comment out line 15 and run the test again, it would notify that uh, test has failed. Yeah, test is failing because this is nil. That's why it's failing. So this is, this is, this is great, but um, 
if we have a lot of classes, we have to write lots of tests just to prove that the property is being set correctly, um, which is extra work. And there is actually a way to eliminate that. So instead of using property injection, we should use a constructor injection and get a non-optional network manager. And capture the network manager strongly. And just provide required initializer. And yeah, it's not optional. So as you can see, since we're not providing an instance on line 14, the compiler actually complains that in Zerto Network Manager, we are missing an argument to pass to the initializer of the view controller. Thus, we prevent um, anyone from creating the view controller without passing a, actually a right type. So test would still pass, but um, it's already redundant because the type system guarantees that we pass a right instance of a network manager to the view controller. Thus, we even don't need to write any uh, extra tests, which is awesome. And this is all provided by free by the Swift compiler. So um, constructor injection is always way to go uh, in 95% of the cases. You cannot overshoot or undershoot with it. It's always great to have a, a list of properties that you need, list of parameters uh, inside of an initializer because whoever creates it would, would make sure to pass the correct type guided by the compiler. And um, regarding the property injection, the problem with uh, the previous example was that if we forget to set it, it doesn't work right. The app builds just fine, but it doesn't work at runtime. So this actually leads to a temporal coupling. So what temporal coupling, temporal coupling means is that um, the code needs to be executed in the correct order, meaning that order matters. So if we create a view controller, then we should not forget to set the network manager afterwards and then return it. If we return it before setting it, then um, the uh, behavior would be wrong and would be uh, would not be as expected. So constructor injection is always the way to go. Uh, you cannot uh, write bad code by providing an, an an explicit list of parameters that should be passed to a constructor. So since constructor injection should be uh, the first method that we should, the first technique that we should resort to, is there a use case for property injection? And the, and the answer is yes. So property injection is great on specific cases, like uh, whenever we have a local default, like with the navigation item, back bar button item. As you can see, it's optional. However, if we don't pass it, it's still okay for the view controller to be created and to be shown on the screen. However, if we pass one, then if the view controller is in the context of UI navigation controller, then it would show a bar button item. So if it's not there, it's still okay. It can still work perfectly fine. But if we provide one, it would show on screen or like the whatever uh, you have in your mind. So we've covered constructor and property injection and the last technique is method injection. So uh, remember we had a network manager which has a single method request which accepts URL string as a parameter to this method and then returns a completion block. So this is actually an example of passing a parameter via method. Whenever we invoke request method, we can pass different uh, URL strings to a network manager so that it could send a network request and fetch list of GitHub users. So uh, on line 62, we are defining this public GitHub URL and then passing it to a network manager. However, we could still use the same network manager with a different URL string if it makes sense so that we can get the list of GitHub users. And the method injection is handy whenever the uh, whenever it is context-based, meaning that when whenever we invoke the method, we define from which URL to load because we cannot know upfront what kind of URL uh, would be passed to it. Thus, it's good to have um, uh, defined it as a parameter. The, the another example is the did select row at index path 
of the UI table view delegate. So uh, whenever you tap on a cell, unless the you unless you tap it like a user interaction, uh, the framework does not know which index path cell of an index path would be tapped. So uh, this is also great a great candidate for being um, for for using a method injection. So yeah, uh, I guess that will be it for uh, all of the foundational techniques, constructor, property, method injection. Remember that constructor injection is always way to go. You cannot overshoot or undershoot, as I said. Property injection can be useful whenever you have a local default or in specific cases, uh, as I've shown, like a bar button item. In method injection is always dependent on the context. So um, whenever it's context-based or like uh, depends on some runtime input, it's always great to use a uh, method injection uh, as, as, we've, as I've shown uh, in, in this example. So yeah, that will be it for this video. And we've covered a lot already in the three videos. And the next videos would be about anti-patterns, which is my favorite. So stay tuned and thanks a lot for watching.